Good evening, everyone. My name is Tom Chavez, and I am the mayor of Temple City. And if you're watching this, you also know that uh, this year's Classic Car Show has gone virtual. This year, uh, one of our goals as a city was to keep as many of our traditions alive as we possibly could. I want to give a first start by giving a shout out to our city manager, Brian Cook, our Parks and Recreation Director, Adam Matsumoto, and his entire staff. They've really, truly stepped up and stepped out of the box on this, uh, as evidenced by our virtual uh, concerts in the park this year, our Camp of Palooza, our Temple City's Got Talent. Uh, they've really done a fantastic job in making sure that all these things that are tradition to Temple City are kept alive. So I wanna thank them for all the work that they've done. This year, our, our virtual uh, classic auto show is going to feature owners of the vehicles who will speak to you about themselves and their vehicles and why they are so special to them. We have anywhere from El Camino, we have Cadillac, we've got, uh, of course, uh, Corvettes. What car show would be complete without a Corvette? And I noticed that we also have a Chevy Chevelle, which was kind of special to me because that was actually my first vehicle. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. I also noticed that we have a vehicle called a Zimmer Golden Spirit, but I wasn't sure what that was. So I actually went online to look it up. They're actually still made as I uh, understand. And uh, they only make about 20, 10 to 20 of them a year, and then go up to $300,000 for each of them. So looking forward to seeing that car as well. I just want to thank you all for tuning in. I want you to make sure you have a great time. Hopefully this time next year, we will all be back to the park together. But until that time, please stay safe, stay healthy, and may God bless all of you. Thank you very much. My name is Bruce Hotchkiss, and this is my 1956 Chevrolet 210 hardtop. She's been with me a very long time. It's my favorite model. I've done all the work myself, except the paint and the interior and the chrome work. It's got a 350 Chevy V8 with just a little bit of cam and a 350 turbo hydro. I bought this number 356 Chevy 210 in 1971 because my first two had mechanical issues. I picked this car because it was, I think, $120, other than my first one was only 20, but I had to tow it home. It was an opportunity at the time. It was running. I drove it home. I drove it for a few months until the oil light came on, and that's when I started doing things. <laughs> All the disassembly, where parts went, the cleaning, the painting, the chroming, and then the reassembly, and not in a very timely manner was all this done. I think I've, I've spent 10 years putting it all back together after the gentleman had it for almost nine months in, in paint, and then went from there. Just drive it now. Someday I'll finish the air conditioning, especially on a day like today. <laughs> it would come in handy and uh, just be able to enjoy it more. It fits me. My name is Steve Allen, and my vehicle is a 1964 El Camino. It's pretty much been gone through from top to bottom, frame off restoration. Basically, I've done everything. It's got a 700 R4 transmission. It's got a positive traction rear end. It's got a 383 stroker motor, headers, Doug's headers. It's got a Holly carburetor. Like all kinds of race people have worked on it. It's a runner. She runs really good. Why the El Camino? They're a rarity, I believe. Uh, I just think that they were just a, like a really bizarre mix, and I've always liked that, the look of them. And they're really kind of funky between a car and a pickup truck. It's called the gentleman's pickup truck. When you look at it from the side, it just has a really mean stance to it. it looks really clean, and I have the Corvette rims and stuff, so it kind of gives it that nostalgic look, but still has a really a uh, clean, mean look to it. Everything will get done. Tackle one project at a time. I mean, I've had it down for like six months straight. A month of that was trying to figure out water leaks. A month, like, where's the water coming from now? Where's the water coming from? It's a lot of like, oh, where is it? And when you finally find it, it's like, oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, my childhood friend, Tim McClure, he uh, helped me out with a lot and uh, it's just reacquaint myself with him after all these years. Our friendship like stopped when we were like 15 and then 
didn't get back together until we were like 60 almost. It's kind of neat, you know, we picked up where we left off. I'm in debt to him forever. He's helped me out a ton. And I've also had people like Jim Van Gordon and Van Gordon Racing who uh, tunes for uh, funny cars. Um, Luke's Transmissions uh, worked with me out in Riverside. And just a slew of people from OPGI to JEGS to US Rims, you name it, they've all, they've all stepped up. It drives like it's uh, like a go-kart now. It's real tight, it's beautiful. There's a lot to be learned about a car that you don't. There's not a definitive answer for an El Camino to set up with these type rims or an El Camino set up with the tubular upper and lower control arms and what kind of shocks to use. It's, it's a lot of ifs, so it's a lot of working with other people that helped me along the way to get to where I'm at now. Um, just having help from people, strangers that I never met before that stepped up. And that's what the hot rod community is kind of like. It's like a lot of people just take their shirt off their back for you if you need help. They're like, hey, can I, how can I help? And I would do the same for them. It's been a gr great experience for me and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. My name is Bill Clark. My car is a 66 Plymouth 426 Hemi Delvedere 2. I saw the picture of the car in the back of a magazine in 1966. The car was on a drag strip back east someplace. The car was black. The guy had a white helmet on his head and he was coming off the starting line. Many of the manufacturers in those days believed that if you win on Sunday, you're going to sell cars on Monday and that's how they built the cars. I just had to have one. And this car was built with the 426 engine. It was pretty fast on the street. There weren't many cars faster at that time. I was on the showroom floor at Melanie Brothers in Pasadena on Colorado Boulevard. It was brand new, had three miles on it. They didn't make very many of them. It was a family car for a while. Uh, I dated in it for a while. I did drag race it for a little bit until I bought another car that is much like this with the same engine, but a year newer. The second day I owned it, I went to visit a friend that I was in the military with, and we got on the Hollywood Freeway eastbound with my foot to the floor and we went across three lanes at the same time on the freeway uh, with the rear tires lit up. When I first bought it, I went out to Irwindale Raceway with a pair of Castler Cheetah Slicks on the back um, and ran low 12s with it, um, I think 108 miles an hour at that time. Um, and it developed from there. I put some headers on it and did some engine work and um, I got in the low 11s with the car um, and then I bought the other car and, uh, Star driving is back on the street. It's been repainted, the interior was redone, the engine's got about 3,000 miles on it since it was rebuilt, but the car's always been nice. I've done all the mechanical work myself, suspension, and brakes, and engine, and things like that. The car was painted, painted years ago by a shop in Alhambra. The interior is a legendary uh, reproduction interior that's just, just like the was from the factory. When driving the car, down the street is kind of like walking a gorilla down the sidewalk, hand in hand. It's real hard to do without a smile on your face. My name is Stuart Walford. My car is a Zimmer. It's actually a garage find. I found it stored in Las Vegas. I bought it in 2014, shipped it to Main Street Automotive in San Gabriel for the restoration. Of course, it wasn't running, but the body was in pretty good shape. 12 months to get it running and get it back into shape. My car was manufactured by Zimmer Motor Company in 1984 out of Pompano Beach, Florida. My vehicle is very rare. It's modeled after a 1934 Duesenberg. I've never seen another one. I go to 12, 14 shows a year. I've never seen another Zimmer at any of the shows. I've won prizes, awards for it. Zimmer Motor Company did the coach work, put it on a Ford Mustang chassis. The body was in pretty good shape because it was covered with stuffed animals at the time I found it. Of course, the motor and everything else was frozen on it and uh, it wasn't running, so I had it shipped. Zimmer was out of business in 1988, but because it was built on a Ford chassis, Ford drivetrain, the engine parts were pretty easy to come by. The radiator, all the brakes, things like that were, were all replaced by genuine Ford motor parts. My car is just as original as it came off the showroom floor. I'm proud of the way the vehicle came out, the way the vehicle looked. It's a very rare automobile. There's only 2,000 of them built. It taught me to have patience. It taught me to look at everything on the car and make sure that it's perfect. 
My favorite thing to do with a car is to drive it. I, I'm on the street, people are thumbs up, they're taking pictures. I'm on the freeway, they're hanging out of the window taking pictures of the car. It's fun. It's a fun car to drive. It's, it's a neat car. I get a lot of attention. My name is Robert Liu. I'm 74 years old, born in Los Angeles, California. The car behind me is a 1973 SS Chevelle. Uh, it's a rare model, which I did not know. They only made 28,675 of them. It's a car that's very well kept. You will not see them around anywhere. You will not see them at any car shows. It performs well, there's no problem. It's on its third engine, you know, it has 162,000 miles. All you do is just change the oil, change the tire, change the battery. Really happy with the car. It's one of a kind. You don't see too many. You may see stock ones, just metal, but not SS. I get thumbs up everywhere I go with this car. Paint job's over 20 years old. I mean, people realize that's 20 years old, that's 20 years old. I mean, I just finished waxing, it looks like it's brand new. I mean, it's real smooth. You touch it, it's so smooth, you know, stuff like that. The reason why the color is when I went to the Gardena Body Shop, I told him I wanted red. I said, you want red? So the gentleman said, okay, here's the book. The book is this thick. So I closed my eyes, I turned the page, and I pointed down, sunset red, and that's the color. Get on the freeway, get out the carbon, drive down the street. I mean, I had a CHP follow me on Long Beach Street for about 15 minutes, he was behind me. He came by, okay, pulse man, like this. It's my enjoyment driving a car, letting everyone else know about it. I have something that's kind of rare and you can enjoy it. That's why I take it to car shows, because people do not see cars like this. The way it looks inside, outside, I mean, I am really enjoying my car. My name is Richard Hassler. I'm the owner of this 1956 Chevy 210 two-door hardtop. I've had it since 1991. It was actually given to me by my family as a birthday present. It had been sitting next to this fellow's garage. Two weeks later, I went by that house again and the car was gone. So I thought he'd sold it to somebody. Much to my surprise, my family bought it. I've had it ever since. It ran and that's about it. The paint was horrible, the exhaust system was shot, the engine didn't run real well, but it was there. This is the original color, not the original paint, but I researched all that models, the color numbers and everything, so that's why it's gone back to this color. Well, I've always wanted a 56 Chevrolet, but this is a 210 hardtop, where most of them are Bel Airs. So this is a pretty rare car, they made about 18,000 of these. I just like it because of the clean lines and the fact that wherever I go, people give me thumbs up. I belong to two car clubs. We used to have cruises. I go all over, just cruise around and go visit people, visit my family. This car, I kept track of what was spent on it. It cost $5,500 for my family in the first place. And then with all the things that have been done to it over all these years, we figured it has about $28,000 in it. But that's cheap when you consider I've had it that long. My name is Joe Sandoval and I have a uh, 57 Corvette. Our goal was to build a car that resembled the 57 Corvette from the outside, but we upgraded the engine, the suspension, everything is modern, uh, new Corvette underneath. It's a resto mod. It's been restored, but it's been upgraded to uh, modern materials. What makes it unique is that we, we, the frame on this car has been upgraded so that it could receive uh, C4 Corvette uh, suspension items. So the car has uh, rack and pinion power steering, which is what the new Corvettes have. It has uh, four-wheel disc brakes. It's got an LS engine from the 2005-2006 Corvette. It's got a Tremec T6 uh, transmission. It's got independent rear suspension. Basically, it's been upgraded quite a bit. Power steering, power brakes. It's a very dependable car and fun to drive. Uh, basically, the paint was already uh, practically gone. Uh, no motor. The seats were shredded. It needed to be upgraded. Uh, basically, the uh, hard part in building this car was uh, all the, new com all the new modern components had controllers of some kind or they were larger than what was in the car, like the transmission. 
So we had to work around uh, how we were going to make everything fit and conceal it so that everything looks right. And so a lot of time was spent in concealing the new upgraded parts. My son has another Corvette, so we, we drive around quite a bit, go to car shows. It's a very easy car to drive, and it's got a lot of power, so you just gotta, you gotta watch it when you drive. But it's, a, it's good on gas, it's just fun to drive. You have to have a lot of patience when you build these, because uh, things, uh, you hit problems that you think are not gonna be able to solve the way you want it, but if you take your time and do research, you find that uh, somebody else has already done it, and, and you can see how they did it, and it works out. My name is Jay Davenport. I have a 61 Cadillac. It's a Sedan DeVille, six window, because of the triangular window on the back. You bought that brand new, you finally made it, because it's $6,500 brand new. It's got a 390, V8, it's got uh, three and a quarter horsepower. The transmission is a three speed. It's called a Jetaway. Everything that Good League did, nothing worked. Air conditioning, radio, heater, everything didn't work. And it was, the paint was chipped all over the place. So it was pretty bad. The only parts that fit it are made for a 61. And it's almost impossible to find a 61 of these days. My sill plates underneath the doors, I spent five years looking for them. And my air compressor, but it took me nearly a year to find that. Everything works now. It's uh, quite a treasure to drive. We've been all over the place more than once, and we just have a good time driving it. This body style I like the best, and on the back had skags coming out on the bumper. 61 and 62 is the only one that has them, so that's what I like the best about it. We love car shows. I got a room full of trophies. 30 some odd first place, so I'm doing all right. Oh, I just love to drive it. Just drive it everywhere. Temple City, thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking out this year's 2020 Virtual Classic Car Showcase. We hope you guys enjoyed this year's show that we put together for you guys, but also checked out some of the unique vehicles that we have here within the city. You also have now the opportunity to vote for this year's People's Choice Awards by visiting our website after the end of the show. Take care and stay safe.